Please. Amen. How many of you are not ashamed of Jesus? If you're not, if you're really not ashamed of Jesus Christ, stand up on your feet. Amen. Let's see who's not ashamed. Amen. We're taking a stand boldly in public for the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's all shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise, God. Praise God. Amen. All right. There's the army. Let's hallelujah. Yeah. Amen, amen, all right, all right. Hey, Vinny, good to see you, all right. God yeah, bless you through man. here tonight. That's amen. a good thing, amen. <laughs> well, we're going to hit a few announcements, and uh, amen. Why don't we go ahead and knock out the offering? Mom, do you got the baskets there? We'll go ahead and knock out the offering and get that taken care of. Amen. Thank you, Father. So it's a good thing serving the Lord. Did you know that? Yeah. It's the best thing you could possibly do. Amen. Amen. I think I better grab another water as we're transitioning here into the offering. Okay. As soon as Miss Elaine gets uh, gets over here, we'll get the taking up the offering. Yeah. Amen. Yep. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Thank Praise you, you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, all. All right, so I'll pray over the offering, and we'll get taken. Thank you, Father. Lord, we thank you for the offering. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this time to give to help keep this place going. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes, Lord. All right. Yes, we're just getting started. We're ready, Freddie, in the name of Jesus Christ. God is having his way. We couldn't put the worship on here because of can music so and there's Jason rights to the music and they, know, they, they uh, block us on Facebook. The other day. So we couldn't bring the worship yes, to you. Tonight. But know. we're going to bring the word of God in Jesus' name. And we're going to spread, spread the love of Jesus Christ. That's exactly what we're going to do. Amen. All right. So, Praise we God. have an important announcement or two to make. So we want to make sure everybody catches this. We have a very important event coming up. Yep. We're going to have Brother Bob come up and talk about that right now. The water baptism coming up. Remember, pay attention. Pay attention. Don't tell us later that you didn't know. You didn't know the details. You didn't know the day. You didn't know the time. Come on. Amen. Amen. As a church, we've decided to hire Antonio and Essek as our new worship leaders. <laughs> We'll call them A and E. A and E. Essek is the evangelist. And Antonio is the one that goes out. He's the apostle. He is sent to the people. And we thank you for both of them. We thank you for everybody that volunteers here. Praise the Lord for all of them. Did Hallelujah. you join them? Did you hear that voice of Essek? Praise the Lord. All right, folks, let's get down to it. We're having a baptism. A baptism is when you decide in your heart you want to give a public confession that Jesus Christ is your Lord and you have decided to serve and follow him. So we're bringing the church together and that is this church, this place, and we're having a good time out at my house. Everybody is invited whether you are getting baptized or not. But if you know somebody that wants to get baptized, bring them. And bring their family. Bring anybody you want to bring. It's good to worship and have fun with your other saints that are like you, that belong in the kingdom. We are supposed to gather and have fun together. We don't have to be bored and sit in a church that has nothing but dead people walking in the pews and sitting in the chairs. We need to be alive for Jesus. So let's go to this baptism and let's lift up the name of Jesus and let's lift up those that want to get baptized. Now, if you decided in your heart that you want to join the army of God and you want to get baptized and show people that you are serious about it and show Jesus Christ your Lord that you are serious about following him, I got some papers over here. All you got to do is sign up. You can bring your mother, your father, your brother, your sister. You can bring anybody you want. More the merrier, I always say. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, folks, we're in Shelby Township. We live on a lake. If you're going to get baptized, you're going to get dumped in a lake. But it's a very safe lake. We might 
remember, there's no sharks in fresh water, okay? There's nothing that can cause you any trouble, okay? And we've done this many times, and we'll be, hopefully, with God willing, we're going to do it many more. Hallelujah. What's up, brother? Yeah, I'll be, I'm going to be right with you. Thank okay, you. Okay, when this uh, time is over, when I'm done speaking here, I'm going to be over by Terry. Raise your hand, Terry. Terry is right, sitting on the sign-up sheet right now. And we're going to sign yeah. you up if you want to go. Brother Terry, It's going right to be there. on August 13th. All right. It's going to start at 2 o'clock, I believe, 2 o'clock, and I believe we're going to try to pick up people at this church at 1230. Now here's the need we definitely have. The biggest need is getting people from here to Shelby Township. So I'm looking for some of you folks that have cars, some of you people that can drive, okay? We'd love for you to come here at about 1230 on that Saturday and put some people in your cars and take them to Shelby Township. We have a van, of course. We have the regular stuff that this church has to move people, but we need a little bit more. Okay, if you don't have the gas money, we will supply you the gas money. Okay? Don't don't take it upon yourselves if you don't have that kind of finances to, to do the ride. Just come Amen. on over. I'll make sure you get some money for that tank of yours and we'll get on our way. Let's remember one thing, folks. Praise you, Jesus. If you were baptized when you were six months old or three months old, you didn't know what you were doing. That's right. Okay? You have not truly given a public confession as Jesus as your Savior. Okay? It's time, if that's what you're relying on, and then baptism is not going to keep you out of the heavens, but it's going to help you understand who you belong to. You need to be baptized as an adult, knowing what you're signing up for. It's like signing up for the army. I want you says the government to the person signing up in the army it's the opposite when you get baptized you're saying i want you jesus i want to sign up in your army i want to belong to the kingdom i want my ending guaranteed that i'm going to go into eternity to be with all the lust of the saints that went before me i'm going to see grandma and grandpa i'm going to see my uncle and my aunt i'm going to see moses and elijah yeah. i'm going to see all old saints. No one will tell you about the wonderful trip we had on the ark. I'm telling you folks, it's going to be awesome there. Amen. But getting past all that, let's just do what Jesus said to do now. Jesus said to be baptized and we are going to do that. We are going to get baptized. Now I got a fun, fun time to tell you. I came by here oh, about an hour ago and picked up a couple of the Jesus House guys and we went to have some dinner. And my brother Antonio kept insisting on going to this Coney Island and I was trying to search another place. And then we showed up at the Coney Island and my, my brother over here, come on up here. Who do we find hanging out in the Coney Island but my brother? Praise the Lord, brother. And he says, you know, do you know any way of getting baptized? And I said, yeah, surely I do. I know how you can get baptized. And now he's going to sign up and get baptized, Amen. okay? And all I can say is, I think he might have had it on his mind already. I don't know. I didn't even ask him. But it is amazing that Antonio's following his stomach, but he doesn't know he's actually following God. And God is trying to tell him, tell me through him where to go. So we can meet oh, up with his brother, I see. I see how that works. sit him on the table, oh, yeah. and get things handled for him. Because God loves everybody, folks. Amen. You've got to understand there is not one of you that he doesn't want in his kingdom. There's Thank not you, one Lord. person, no matter what you Praise. think about yourself, God Praise. doesn't think that about you. God ba, 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 is ba, ba, in love da, da, with da, da, you. Da, he da, wants da, you. Da, da, he wants you more than you can imagine. You say, what does he want me for? He created you. He created you because Whoa. of the love he has for you. Hey guys, he what's happening? To be part Good of to all see you. That he's got planned for you. All the best thing in your life he's got planned for you. You just got to get on the road to his purpose for your life. 
Huh? I'm going to give you a pamphlet. Uh -oh. I, got, I forgot the pamphlet part. Folks, Praise God. when you sign up, or even if you haven't, aren't going to sign Thank up for baptism, I got lots of pamphlets to hand out to tell you how to get there. So that's about all I got to say right now. We definitely are going to feed you and take care of you while you're there. Mark Spaulding has agreed to do the praise and worship while we're there. And I hope you come because we're going to have a good time. Amen. Amen. Give All right, I'm over here. Anybody, anybody want to sign up right now? Just come right over here, please. Amen. Amen. So who plans on coming to the water baptism? It's going to be a good time. Yes. It definitely is. I'll be there. Yes. Even my wife will be. Wife and baby will be there. Yes, yes. We haven't brought him down here yet. You know, we... This, this ministry isn't really developed in the area of babies and nurseries, and it'd be kind of like hard to just kind of watch over him and deal with him in a service. And so we're just kind of waiting until he gets a little old or something like that. I don't know. We're figuring it out. But she's she's probably watching online right now. Praise God. Thank you, her. Jesus. And, uh, Amen. Solomon's grown up. Yes. He's so much bigger. We would realize that he's so much bigger now than he was eight weeks ago that he was born. Yes. Growing fast. So, Bob, we have some people signing up right now for the water baptism. That's good. So, just to be clear, anyone that wants to sign up right now to be water baptized and you've already made a commitment to follow Jesus, you want to be baptized you haven't been baptized since that commitment. Come on up right now and uh, sign up yep. on the sheet while while Bob's got this going on. Whoa. This is important. Look it's at the bird. Amen. Yeah. So, so who's it. checked the weather reports? Are we good on rain for the evening? Heck yes. All right. Doubt not. Antonio says we're good. Antonio, are you sure? Is smiling, are you sure? His goatee. I think he's it ain't going to rain him. on us. All right. <laughs> Oh man. We, we got all Amen. these prophets ben, prophesying. Good to see you, Joy. All right. There's a lot of people that's good to see tonight. Scott. Oh you, man. And they want Hannah. me to preach, you gotta be Amen. kidding. Me. And I'm we have a right wedding here. coming up. I just remembered oh, yeah. this just now. Man. We have a yeah, wedding I know coming they were married, up man. in a couple months. How many you know of you knew that? that for a long time? How I many of you can guess who's gonna get married next? I gotta go get this. Any anyone got any guesses? Scott says no. Yeah, not a trip. You're now not. Scott's pointing that way. Heather and Max, Amen. You recently have decided to say I do before the Lord, and that is coming up at a at a near future date, what? from what I understand. And uh, we know that the Word of God says God said at the beginning that it is not good for man to be alone. I've but I will that. make him a helpmate for him. I've heard of that. And it is definitely God's design um, that a yes, man Lord. and woman prayerfully uh, enter into that that covenant before the Lord. If they if they want to live together, if they want to commit their lives together, the right thing to do is to is to say I do before the Lord in the presence of God and before the presence of ministry. Uh, of witnesses and so that's what they want to do they want to get married and make that covenant before god yes. that they're committing themselves oh, to each other for life and uh, god honors that and we want to support them in that decision so let's give a hand to uh max and amen i was going to say marie you're not marie you're heather max and heather amen all right amen so Amen. That's uh, that's what the Lord the, the Lord wants intact couples you, on this planet that have made Thank a commitment. You, Father. Thank you, you want to know one reason why the Lord wants Thank that, you, Lord. that commitment in that way? Yes. Because come on. stuff's gonna come up. That's right. In the day to day life in that relationship. Come on. Man. Stuff's gonna come up that's difficult to deal with, and at times you're gonna feel like leaving that person. You're gonna feel like quitting. You're going to feel like walking away. That That's going to happen if you're in a relationship with a human being. And, and so a man to a woman, a woman to a man. And so ultimately, with this marriage thing, uh, one reason why God wants 
you to prayerfully, now mind you, this is after you've really prayed about it and, and made sure that this is a godly person for you to settle down with. Amen. Come on. Uh, you know, I'm kind of brushing over a lot of important details here. But but God wants you to make a, a, a rock-solid uh, commitment to that person, a covenant before God that God will honor that says, I'm going to stay with this woman through thick and thin, or I'm going to stay with this man through thick and thin, united uh, under Jesus, amen, and so that when the going gets tough, when you're having a bad day, guess what, you can't just walk away, you can't just get walk away amen. if she's having a bad day attitude or, or he is but the Lord wants us to learn how to how to properly do this amen so there's a lot that could be said about that but we'll move right along here we'll move right along so God is good amen praise you father thank, thank you for enduring me for these 10 minutes for allowing me to take up your time. I know it was probably difficult for you to sit through this. Now we're, I got good news for you. Now we're gonna get into the good stuff. Amen, does that sound good? All right. So I'm gonna hand this over to Pastor Steve here. All right. All right. Oh man. Thank you, Jared. That was the good stuff. Give God a hand, amen. You better be listening about that marriage covenant. It ain't no joke. Two become one. Amen. Literally, two become one when they say, I do. So for those of you that have failed in marriage relationships, divorces, things like that, we know things go south. You can get on your face. I believe God can restore some or move you on whatever it is. But it's very important that you pray about the will of God. And I'm going to tell you something, if you don't want the will of God, you might go through five, six, seven people and still never find the right one. You don't want to do that. You've heard Richard Amos' testimony when I met him in uh, the jail in 1988. Yep. Biggest bust in Macomb County for cocaine. 45 pounds, and I sat there, he didn't know me, I didn't know him. Sat in the room, no glass. So he, he I, I didn't know he had... I've been busted for that. I didn't know what kind of case he had, but when he sat down, came out of the cell, and I was sitting there, and uh, knowing that I know now, he probably thought I was from the DEA or FBI or something, because he didn't know he didn't know who I was. But I knew he was a father of a guy that just got caught up. And before I found out what he did, I asked him one thing. I found out what his name was. I, I introduced myself. The first question I asked him was this: Are you married? He goes, no. I go, have you ever been married? He said, yes. I go, how many times? He said, seven. I go, brother, you're the one with the problem. There can't be seven sisters that have been that crazy. You've got to be the problem. That was my first introduction to him. And it just so happens, he, as we got into it, he, uh, he had had the biggest bust in Macomb County sitting there. He got his two daughters caught up. They all had natural life senses and uh, facing them, it was really sad. But guess what happened to Richard after seven marriages without a wife? He got saved by the blood of Jesus right in that cell, responding to the gospel, not because the heat was on him, but because he wanted to. And he waited, which I told him to do, and think about it. He said, you know, I'm in a terrible place, but I'm not giving my heart to Jesus and coming to the Lord and getting saved because of this. I mean, I'm doing this because I recognize what Christ did for me. He shed his blood for me. <laughs> he paid the price for my sins, and I want that forgiveness in Jesus' name. And he was yet to do 400-some days in the county jail before he went to trial and then get two natural lives. But he gave his heart to Jesus, and when he opened his eyes, I'll tell you what, it was like Christmas lights were on his eyes. And he felt, he just had me feel a presence come in. And I'll tell you what, when you're in jail, if you're in the natural, there ain't no presence hanging around. But a presence came into that little room and just lifted him up. And he felt this peace, joy came on him. So no matter what was going on in the natural, God supernaturally saved his wretched soul, took away his sins, washed him in the blood of Jesus. Jesus came into his heart and set him free, even in his condition. So give God a hand. Amen. That's a good thing. So if God can do that for him, he can do it for you. Amen. We're going to get in this Bible here. Anybody have a problem with getting in the Bible? No. Now, 
Here's a test. There's a lot of motorcycles, fancy cars that go by. And one thing I don't really teach much out here, because teaching's a little more intense, you gotta stay focused, more preaching and evangelistic. But the bottom line is, when the word is sown, the Bible says Satan comes immediately to take away the word that's put in your heart. So if you can learn to pay attention to the word with the traffic going by, you're being trained where you can be going anywhere and maybe hear the word of God. So this is good training. If you want God, if you want to serve God, if you're paying attention and you don't have to look at the cars and get distracted, God can plant the incorruptible seed of the living word of God in your heart. And you can grow into something that you've always wanted to be and much more. God himself will grow in your life and make you into a beautiful flowering plant for Jesus. Give God a hand. Amen. So we're going to get in the Bible here. Father, we just pray right now in the name of Jesus. Because Lord, we know, many of us know we haven't come here just to play religious games or have another meeting. God have mercy on that, Lord. This ain't about playing church. It's about really seeking you with all of our hearts. So Father, we come before you again. Somebody mentioned tonight. I believe our brother, by coming boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy, book of Hebrews, and find grace to help us in our time of need. So we just repeat that prayer right now, Father. We come boldly to your throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy right now for our lives, and find the grace to help us in our time of need. Because whether we admit or not, all of us have need of God in some area, if not many areas of our life. So, Father, thank you right now. We commit our way to you. We trust also in you. And thank you that you'll bring it to pass in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, if you got a Bible, you got to start getting used to bringing your Bible to church. Amen. Because how do you know if I'm reading out of this, I ain't snookering you. There's a lot of snookering preachers out here. There's a lot of cons. They'll tell you something, but they're not reading from the Bible. Amen. It's called the trick bag. Right? The trick bag. A lot of people out to make money off people, fleece the sheep, and so on and so forth. But it's important that you learn to, 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 to take your Bible or have it on a phone or something. But uh, follow along if you can. But nonetheless, we're going to get in the book of Luke. And I believe I heard the Lord about this. I've been in prayer all day and searching out certain things. But I know God's speaking something directly. So Father, thank you in the name of Jesus for this people right here. That you love them with an everlasting love. That you have nothing but your best in mind for them. And I thank you, Lord. They haven't come here in vain. But we look to you, the living God, who gives us all things richly to enjoy. And we, we want to enjoy your presence. We, we pray for the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you. The eyes of our understanding being enlightened. That we might know the hope of your calling. In the name of Jesus. So thank the Lord for being merciful to us. In Jesus' name. Amen. So I'm going to read from the book of Luke. I'm going to read a part of a chapter here. How many know when Jesus entered into his ministry at 30 years old, he sort of stayed in the shadows. And then when he, when he got baptized, talk about baptism, when John baptized him in the River Jordan, that was really the start of his ministry. He came out in the public. And all of a sudden, Jesus started to minister. He started to gather his people. Uh, in the book of Matthew and Luke, I believe it is, he started to call his people. He called Peter and John from uh, their father's fishing business. And he just went up to the lake and he said, follow me. And it says they left their nets and their father and followed him. What kind of anointing, what kind of radiant magnetic draw did this unusual being that could get them to leave their father's business? Because anybody that's been working for their daddy knows daddy don't like you leaving the job, right? And they left their nets, left their father and followed him. And he went and got several others, same situation. There was something about this Jesus. And the Bible says that he had the spirit without measure. We have the spirit to a measure. That he had the fullness of the Spirit. He was the Son of God. He was God manifest in the flesh. And yet he was the Son of Man. Born of a virgin. Lived a perfect life. And preached the gospel. He gathered people to do what? To follow him. Everyone he gathered. He said follow me. And I'll make you what? Fishers of men. 
So no longer fishing for fish. If that's cool, you got to eat or have a little fun or iron out. But Jesus called us to become fishers of men. That means looking out here at the populace around you, no matter how wicked, evil, or nice they are, and realize they are in God's target zone and you need to be you need to be aware of that and be willing to serve God so God can use you to be a blessing to that person but you gotta have a heart for that now, the sad thing is a lot of Christians and so called Christians have no heart for people don't want to serve God so I'm titling this do you really want to serve God or do you just want to be a nice famous preacher you want your name in life you want to make a, a few bucks you want to get a job whatever the case may be or just be a Christian by name. Go to church. You know, fill a pew. Maybe throw a few bucks in the offering. That ain't what it's about, folks. Everybody that followed Jesus sat under his teaching. Followed his heart. They received correction. They received direction. They received wisdom. When they got cocky and they were saying things like, Well, Lord, who's the greatest? Who's going to sit at the, the right hand of the Father? And he said, Hey, you guys don't get it. This is about humbling yourself and becoming as this little child. And he brought a little child, and he said, except you become like this little child, you will no way enter into the kingdom of heaven. So he had the wisdom of God. He, he that had seen me, he said, has seen the Father. So Jesus is the express will of God in action, in the flesh. And he left us a whole book of words where we can follow his direction and his uh, heart for our life. So it's time to be about our Father's business. So I'll start again by saying this. Who here really wants to serve God? I'm talking about really serving God. That's good. Good to see some hands going up. So I'm going to read in the book of Luke where he's commissioning some of his crew and then they go out and do some things and they come back with a report. We're going to go from there. So Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. Okay, verse, verse 1. After these things, and Jesus had just said, there were no chapters, so this was all a continuous conversation. He had just said, no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. In other words, God wants our undivided attention. He wants our focus. He said in Matthew 6, if your eye is single, your whole body will be filled with light. But if your eye is evil or unclear or murky or not focused, your body will be filled with darkness. Then Jesus said, the main squeeze said, and how great will that darkness be? So I really question how many people are focused on Jesus. How many people want to follow the light of the world? How many people want to be sold out for God for real? And quit playing religious games, just going to church or trying to be nice. Or hustle somebody for a chicken sandwich. Amen. Or some free pop or some free water. It's more than that, folks. That's just a little nibbling to get you up to take the hook. See, people bring this stuff so you can come and relax, but God's got a big hook, and he wants to catch you. Lock, stock, barrel, and the fisherman in his boots. He, he wants all of you. So pay attention. So right after he said, no man having put his hand in the plow is fit for the kingdom of God. In other words, be serious about the commitment. When you come to Christ, give him your life. It's not about praying a religious prayer. It's about your heart being engaged and come to a place where, God, I want you more than anything else. And for your purposes, not mine. you got to get rid of your own thoughts, plans, and do the will of God from the heart, the Bible says. Not with eye services, men pleasers. we got a lot of men pleasers, people that want people to feel good. This is about following the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And His name is Jesus. And He rose from the dead for our justification and our salvation. Give Him a hand. Let's give Jesus a hand He deserves. Amen. He's a good God. So here's a few things. And in the wind we will get this. So after these things, the Lord appointed 70 others. And He sent them two and two before His face. And place where he himself would come. So he sent them before to sort of condition the people to let them know, hey, Jesus is coming to town. So he had 70 people out there preaching the gospel, talking about Jesus, this great person that uh, they were coming to know, didn't have a full revelation, but they knew there was something special about him. And they went before his face to prepare people for his coming into their area. Therefore said he unto them, the harvest truly is great, but the labors are few. 
Pray you therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. Has anybody there ever heard that scripture before? How many are aware there's a big harvest out here? There's been a harvest forever and a day. Jesus said the fields are white already to harvest. It's always harvest time in the kingdom. There's always people that need Jesus. Always people that need the salvation that many of us have found. So it's time to get up off our, our bump off a log, so to speak. Get serious about this and become a soul winner for Jesus, a witness for Jesus, right? And quit playing religious games. If you got the word of God in you, God put it in you to move through you, to, to, to touch somebody else's life. Could be at work, could be in a homeless shelter. Homeless shelter is a great place to be, especially if you're in a shelter right now. You can get pumped up for Jesus. Go back and you can be the big old light in the dark room. And it's dark in, in St. John's. It's pretty dark in here. And you shine as a light. People say, where you been? What would you say? Peacemaker. You've got to have a peacemaker. Jesus. Jesus and peacemakers are one. Amen. So he sent them forth. And this gets really deep, folks. One thing about Jesus, he didn't mince words. He didn't waste words. But he was talking to his disciples. And it's interesting because if you go to John 6, 66, Mark of the Beast. It says, many of his disciples followed him no more. So there's some that start out and some that give up or quit for whatever reason. Make sure you're not one of them. Because those that don't follow no more ain't going to the right place. They're saying for whatever reason, nah, I don't think so. Ain't happening. I'm going to do something else. Jesus ain't nobody's fool, and he wants you. Lock, stock, and barrel. So here's, here's me. Send him forth. And go your ways. Behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. A picture of pretty little lamb. In fact, we got a little pretty little dog here. It's sort of like a little lamb. There are, there, an eagle wouldn't mind eating that dog. I'm just being honest. If an eagle's up there wept and they got incredible eyesight, they seen that little dog and that dog's, uh, uh, not the dog's hungry, the eagle's hungry, he'll put a bead on him. If he can get to that dog, he'd love to take that dog. Now wolves are the same way. Jesus said, you're sheep, and I'm sending you forth like among wolves. Wolves are hungry, they're ravenous, they're selfish, they eat whatever they can find, and he's saying, I'm sending you forth as sheep amongst wolves. So just because somebody smiles doesn't mean they're your friend. Just because somebody smiles doesn't mean they have your best intentions. How many have been conned by somebody in life in some situation at least once, if not 20? And you learn, hopefully, right? Well, you're still sitting here, every day you learn something. But that's how it is in this world. It's a wicked world. Sin does stuff to people, amen. Everybody's born in sin. Probably most people choose to go down a path that's not the right way. So he said, I send you forth the sheep amongst wolves. Don't carry any purse, nor a wallet, nor shoes, and salute no man by the way. Oh my God. How many suitcases do we take on a trip? How many pairs of shoes? <laughs> We're so far from this stuff. But I'm, I'm going to tell you something. I have tested this out with nothing on the highway, and I was provided better on the highway, hitchhiking around the states talking about Jesus with nothing than I've ever could do for myself. This stuff works, give God a hand. We're just so caught up in this society, and there's nothing wrong with having a job, doing what we gotta do. But if you ever have to be out there without any, 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 anything, God will provide for you. And the only reason you don't see it more is because you're already taken care of in the natural, by your own strength or whatever. It's just the way it is. Nothing really wrong, but if God's calling you to go, you don't have to be supported by anybody. If God says, I want you in China, I want you in Africa, I want you in Haiti or whatever, you can go and have nothing and God will miraculously provide. There's just something about the person that obeys the Spirit of God and steps out of the boat, so to speak. God will be there and he'll perform things for you you can't perform for yourself. He'll provide for you what you can't provide for yourself. But you got to get out there, if God's calling you to, and test the water, so to speak. God will be with it. So he said, don't take shoes, don't take money. And, when it, and into whatever house you enter, first say, I don't know how many have done this, I've done this many times. Whatever house you enter, first say, peace be to this house. 
There's a lot of hops I've gone into through the years, could be saved or unsaved, and I'll be on the front porch when I knock on the door and I'll say, Peace be to this house. Thou shalt decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee. If God said to do it, you should do it. You may have none have done it, but put that in your, I don't want to say your thinking cap, your believing cap. Amen. Do it. And watch the atmosphere change. Because a lot of houses are filled with a lot of demons, a lot of strife, a lot of arguing. And God's got to condition the atmosphere. So when you walk through that door, you'll be in a position to hear what you got to say. God doesn't waste time when he raises up. He knows exactly what he's doing. And to a person, a man or a woman, even a child that's obedient to him, there's nothing God won't do first to you and then through you to bless somebody else. Because God has somebody in mind behind you and me. It's other people. Give God a hand for that because it's the truth. Other people. So if you're serious about serving God, you can make some adjustments in your thinking tonight and just where you're at in life and you can start taking them baby steps in the right direction. And don't ever look at your present situation or even the Bible says your momentary light affliction keep you away from focusing on the things that are unseen. The unseen God is calling many people tonight to a closer walk in Him. With Him, trust me, I know that. Because if we are moving in that direction, hearing the voice of God speaking to us to go, to do, to be a part of the end time harvest, we're missing the whole point. We're still distracted by whatever. It's not about us. It's about Jesus. It's about the kingdom of God. It's about others. And God wants you to be busy about the Father's business. Just like he prayed. Not my will, Lord, but yours be done. Start making that your daily prayer. God, not my will, but yours. Amen. So, he's given them words. How to act, how to respond, what to do. Being very specific. He said, when you say peace be in this house, if the son of peace be there, your peace shall rest upon you. Alright? If not, it shall turn you again. And in the same house remain eating and drinking such things as they give, for the labor is worthy of his heart. Going on from house to house. So Jesus is very specific. Uh, the Bible says about the Holy Spirit, I will lead you, I will instruct you and lead you in the way that you shall go. I will guide you with my eye. And if you believe that word, his word, God can start leading you to the right people at the right time. Where the fruit's ready to pick. Or the hearts are ready to sow a seed. But are you willing to go where God wants you to go and to do what God wants you to do? This is normal Christianity, folks. This is not some hyper-spirituality. This is what Christ wants of his followers. And I guarantee you, if you don't find it out here, you will find it out in the next life. That we were either on target or we missed it by a million miles. You don't want to have those regrets because I'll tell you what, we are all on planet earth and this ain't no joke down here. There's demons and angels, God and the devil, and everybody's warred for souls. And now that God's got our attention and know Jesus is the answer, God expects us to respond and give our life to him, not just go to church and try to be nice. Amen. Give God a hand because you should be thinking about that, not just trying to be nice. Serve God for real. Same house remain. Again, eating and, and drinking such things as they give. For the laborers worthy of desire, go not from house to house. Into whatever city you enter and they receive you, eat such things as are set before you. And heal the sick that are there and say to them, The kingdom of God has come nigh to you. But into whatsoever city you enter and they receive you not, go your ways out into the streets of the same and say, Even the very dust of your city which cleaves on us, we do wipe off against you. Wow. Notwithstanding, be assured of this, that the kingdom of God has come nigh to you. But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable in that day for Sodom than for that city. Woe to thee, Chorazin. Woe to thee, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works have been done in Tyre and Sidon, which have been done in you, they had had a great while ago repented, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it shall be more tolerable it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment than for you. And you, Capernaum, which are exalted to heaven, you shall be thrust down to hell. He that hears you, he's saying to his disciples, hears me. In other words, you're a representative of me. If Jesus was here today, he said, when you go in my name, you are representing me. You're representing the kingdom of God. It ain't about you. You aren't representing a church or a denomination. You're representing Jesus Christ. 
Don't you ever forget that. Because unless people know the real Jesus, they can't be saved. They won't understand salvation. You got to make the gospel plain. You got to tell people what Christ did and what's available to them. And take it to heart. Be a soul winner for Jesus. Be a witness like the scripture said. So he said, uh, and you Capernaum shall be exalted him. You'll be thrust on him. So he that hears you hears me. He that despises you despises me. Did, did you ever feel rejected before? Well, if you're witness and you feel rejected, don't worry because they rejected Jesus. All right? He said, marvel not if the world hates you. It hated me. And if it hated me, they're going to hate you. Not everybody's going to love you all the time. In fact, the Bible says if everybody loves you, then there's a problem. <laughs> you're probably not being real. You're probably compromising something. Now, you can learn to build relationships, which is very important before you sow the seed. Let them know you're not crazy. You don't have to go up there screaming at people Bible scriptures. Amen. Be led by the Spirit of God. Amen. Talk about things, cars or something, gardening or whatever. Kick it with them. Get to know them. And then when they see that you're not crazy, say when they see that I'm not crazy. Say it again. you got to get this. Then spoon feed them the Word as the Spirit of God would use you. The Word has to go from the head to the heart. Jesus said, let these sayings sink down into your ears. Not go in one ear and out the other, but let these sayings sink down into your ear. You're a carrier of the gospel. The living words of God are in many of you, and you have an opportunity. And you're blessed by the Most High God to be able to be commissioned by Him to share the Word of God with others. We have no clue how blessed we are, and most people don't know this stuff. So take it to heart and be serious about your commitment to Jesus. Amen. So again, he said, he that hears you, hears me. He that despises you, despises me. And he that despises me, Jesus, despises him. Who's that? That sent me. The Father. They can say, I love God and everything. But if you're talking about Jesus, they don't want you. They don't want the Father. He and the Father are one. Amen. That's what the Word says. And I'm going to tell you right now, the Bible's true. Every word of God is true. This word was written by men of old as they were moved by the Holy Spirit, who is the Spirit of truth, who is the Spirit of God. And these words were recorded for our admonition and our instruction. Amen. Aren't we blessed? Give God a hand. We're blessed. There's a lot of countries. There's no way they can do what we're doing right now. Just hanging out and talking about this. You know, having a Bible at home and having time to read the word. We've got to take every word of God that God gives to us when we open this book or hear it to heart. Let these saints sink down into your ears. He said, he that hears you, hears me. He that despises you, despises me. He that despises me, despises him that sent me. Now we get to some uh, punchline here. So the 70 returned again. That means they obeyed him and they went. They went to do what he told them to do. They obeyed the Lord. And when they were done for the day or whatever it was, they returned. They returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Boy, that's a revelation. See, they must have known devils were real to even mention them. Some people don't even believe in a devil. They knew devils were real. For them to say, even the devils. So even as they grew up, they probably noticed devils were all over the place causing all kinds of chaos. But when they went out in the unction of the Holy Spirit and using the name of Jesus, they realized, oh my God, those devils have been driving everybody crazy in me. They were subject to the name of Jesus. They were rejoicing about that. They were excited. Man, those demons, we've been plagued all our life. But something new has happened. They bow. They listen to the name of Jesus. They scatter at the name of Jesus. They run at the name of Jesus. But what what they have to do to find that out? They had to preach the gospel. They had to talk about Jesus. They had to use the name of Jesus in order to know that the devils were subject to that name. Amen. So if Jesus said to them, hey, I hear you. I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. In fact, I was in the bed last night, and there was a big storm that swept by our neighborhood. Big storm. And big flashes of light. It's pretty late, probably about one in the morning. And all I thought of as I sat there, now I know the lights appeared. It was real near the house there, a big light, and I was waiting for the boom. And it actually took a real long time for the, for the uh, not the music, the sound to follow the light. 
But a whole lot of lightning struck last night, real close, almost in the same spot. And then it'd be a big boom. Jesus said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. What were they doing? Listening to Jesus, obeying his orders, going out and saying, in the name of Jesus, go from this person. You foul spirit, leave this person right now in Jesus' name. I command you in Jesus' name, you spirit of infirmity, go in the name of Jesus Christ. And the demons that had him bound, the powers of hell were literally broken because of the name and authority that was invested in them in Jesus' name. Jesus gave his disciples authority over demons. And guess what? He's giving you authority over demons. When he rose from the dead, he said, Behold, all power is given unto me. Now you go and you do. You preach. You tell people I'm risen. And when you tell people Jesus is risen, the demons have to go. And now there's an opportunity for you to sow the incorruptible seed of the word of God in their hearts. And they can get to know the Jesus you did. Don't be selfish with this salvation. Tell others about Jesus. We're only here once. When you go, that's it. Your turn's over. Your turn's over. You got God, if you got God and you just think about that, you're carrying God around. Wake up. You're not just sitting. If you know Jesus, God's in you. God is literally in you. We're all sitting here with God in us. You think he just saved our souls to sit in us? You say, oh, nice sermon. Oh, it's fun being unchained. I want my chicken sandwich now to go home and just be naturally minded and get crazy, maybe get in a fight, start cussing somebody out. Are you serious? We're talking about the living God. Amen. The living God has chosen you and divinely selected you because he thought he'd have mercy on you and let you know about his love for you. And somehow he brought you through whatever way to good old peacemakers, to Jesus' house, to let you hear the word so you could open up your heart and say, Jesus, have mercy on me. That was because God was good to you. So what are we doing in return? Uh, do we want to give him away? Do we want to learn how to do it? Start talking to him like you talk to a friend. And then go out and tell somebody else what you're learning. When you sit in the Bible class, you got you to gotta take that to heart and share it with somebody else. Amen. So Jesus beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. I wonder if he felt Jesus. I wonder, I wonder what that that devil, and that was Satan, that wasn't just, wasn't just a demon. He beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Boy, those were some of the first people to use his name. And I'll tell you what, the powers of darkness had been ruling for thousands of years. And all of a sudden, their whole kingdom was upset because their main head chief, the prince of darkness, was cast down to the earth. He fell to the earth as lightning. I'm sure the demons looked at that and they thought, what happened to our master? What happened to our boss? Oh my God, if the boss is going down and he had all power, what about us? The demons were trembling that day because the church, the Christians, the followers of Jesus took to heart to do what Jesus told them to do. If he had told them and they didn't do nothing, Satan would have never fallen from heaven. And guess what? God commissions you. He commissions me. All of us. Our brother from Vietnam. He brought him over here to commission him. Take what you learn and tell people. Go and tell. Tell the world. Let people know. Use, use what God gives you. We're all different. So he beheld lightning. But he went on to say on that, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. And over all the power of the enemy. And you need to get this. This is what I heard in the church there. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Some of you are bound by fear. Some of you are bound by intimidation. Some of you are bound by what are people going to think. Some of you think he might hit me if I talk about Jesus. All these thoughts, listen, every one of them is a lie straight out of hell. That's the devil talking to you. You need to know that. Jesus said nothing shall by any means hurt you. If he said it, can we believe it? He said it. Do you believe it? So nothing shall by any means hurt you. Say this. Nothing shall by any means hurt me. Say it again. Nothing shall by any means hurt me. Say it again. Nothing shall by any means hurt me. And say this. I can be a witness for Jesus. 
Because the devil's a liar. And I'm not listening to the devil anymore. I'm going to be a witness for Jesus. And I'm going to talk about Jesus. And I'm going to be a light for Jesus. And I'm going to learn a whole lot more about Jesus. And I'm going to learn to be obedient to Jesus. And whatever he tells me to do. Give God a hand for your mouth. Your heart. This is serious. This is end times. Mike's up in his 80s, man. He's pushing a little, but he's still going. Father's love. Yeah, the Father's love. It's all about the Father's love. So he said, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. So that's good news. Your authority over the devil. Seeing the devil's cast out. Seeing that Jesus saw the devil fall from heaven. That was all cool. And that's what Jesus was saying in a street language he'd be saying, but anyway, you know, that's all good, but guys, here, here's what's really cool. See, that was just the cake. But Jesus always has icing on the cake. He gave me ice and he said, notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. You know what I was hearing the Spirit of God say in the last day or two? Give people hope on what's waiting for them. And here's what I heard the Spirit of God say. Streets of gold. That's just one little bitty scripture in the Bible. Streets of gold. We're going to be walking on in the next life. We're going streets of gold. It's going to be all kinds of beauty, all kinds of magnificence, giant pearls. Everything's perfect. No crime. No pain. No shame. No sickness. No disease. No drama. No craziness. Just Jesus. The Prince of Peace. No need of the sun and the moon. For he is the light. The Lamb is the light. The Father himself is going to be there. You're going to see God face to face. And God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. And when he looks at your pretty eyeballs, he's going to say, I'm glad you love me. I'm glad you serve me. Come in. Well done, you good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of heaven. Praise God. To the faithful servant, that's what he's going to say. Now, I don't know what you're thinking about. I'm not even excited about gold, but I guess gold's pretty nice up there. It's nice down here to some people, but, you know, down here it ain't about the money. It's about souls. Jesus wants us to reach out and touch lives. Befriend people. Love people. Ask them how they're doing. You need any prayer for anything. That's where you start. Are you okay? You know, or maybe it looks like you're tripping about something. Can I help, man? That's what people need. They need to know you care. And when the love of God, which is shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost, which is given to us, Romans chapter 5, it's in there for a Christian. That love wants to move through you. So we got to get rid of the fear. He said, nothing shall by any means hurt you. And start letting the love of God flow through you to let God use you to be a blessing to somebody else. God loves people. He loved us so much he gave Jesus. So that the worst sinner could be saved. The worst adulterer, whoremonger, homosexual, killer, drug dealer, drug addict, whatever. They could be saved by the blood of Jesus. If they'll hear if they'll accept, if they'll repent and say, Jesus, have mercy on me. You carry that word if you know that's in the Bible. But getting this Bible in your head and going to school and coming to church is not enough. You gotta ask God to make that word alive in you. Because that word is a living word. The Bible says it's a living word. It's in you. It's churning. It wasn't meant just to be put on a library shelf. Get intellectually correct. Learn all kinds of doctrine in that. I, I'm pretty good at that when you're crazy. I'm not. Yeah, 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 you're all puffed up. Come down to earth. Knowledge puffs up, but charity builds up. When you walk in love, you're walking in God. And when people know you love them and you really care for them and they need a show, but it's the heart of God talking to you, they'll open up. And guess what people are waiting for? The genuine. They're tired of the zirconium. They're tired of the fake. They want the genuine. So we need to be real. We need to be real. And let God have mercy on us. By calling us to himself, which he's doing tonight. And give your life to God without any condition or reservations.
that's where you start. But that's just the beginning point. Then every day start putting God first. Not my will, Lord, but yours be done. Lord, I commit my way to you. I trust in you. And thank you, Lord, you'll bring it to pass. No matter what's going on. Economic confusion. Craziness in the family. Tripping with somebody else. Always forgive. Always release. Crucial. Necessary. Absolutely got to do it. No matter who's betrayed you. Who's lied to you. Who set you up. Who didn't represent you well. Let them go. It ain't worth it. And you'll feel the peace of God that passes all understanding. Keep your heart and mind through Jesus Christ. And you'll say, why didn't I do that for, for, before? For 15 years, I've been carrying this around. And Lord, I just thank you that you made an altar on Shane Street. And I just thank you. You're allowing me to kneel here and give you praise tonight, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. I'll tell you what, folks. God's had great mercy on every one of us. And there's nothing God won't do for every one of us here. But it takes a will and heart to want to serve God for real. Happy to do more than break the bread of life to you, which you will, in prayer, in service. Listen to radio, read your Bible. He'll break that bread, but take that bread and let that bread become leavened bread and grow. And then all of a sudden, it'll have to come out of you. You go, I, I got to tell somebody. I got to go tell my neighbor. Somebody will see you walk across and say, where's that guy going? i got to tell somebody about Jesus. Yes, yes. i got to do it. Run. Tell him, tell him, tell him. It, it works that way. The living word. This ain't a dead word. It's a living word. God ain't nobody's fool. And look, at his disciples followed him. They took to heart their authority in the name of Jesus. They cast out devils. They preached the gospel. They saw great results. They found out their names were written in heaven, which was more important than that. They had to get that revelation. That's why Jesus told them. Amen. So they walked away from that meeting and said, man, that was really cool, man. We were casting out devils and stuff, you know. We were really pumped. But you know what? When Jesus said, hey, rejoice not that the demons are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Jesus just told me I'm going to heaven. You know what? I like that. But I'm not going to hold to myself. I'm going to tell other people. I'm going to be an extrovert. I'm going to start learning to take them baby steps. If I come back, I'm going to take two more forward. I ain't going to let the devil trick bag me. He fell from heaven. Jesus gave me all power. And I got his name and I can cast out devils. I, and you got to deal with the fear. But remember, nothing shall by any means hurt you. He said that to his whole crew. And guess what? We and you and me and we are God's crew. Those of, those of us that are in Christ. So let's do this. Let's be like this gentleman back here that after he graduates, he's 20 miles away or whatever, but he'll get the bus every week and come back. Why? Why would you want to come to the ghetto, the hood? I don't know. Maybe I'll ask him. Come up here. Heck, let's, let, I'm not going to say what he's going to say. Come here. I, I, I got to find out. Why would he come back? He's an evergreen in seven. That's, that's 20 miles away. Why would you be homeless for 30 years, right? Get saved here, hang with us a couple years, move on, and you come back. What is the deal? Could you come over here and just hold this and talk to us for a minute? Well, the deal is that God wants me to be here. This is where he wants me. And this is why I want to continue to come. And you can get miracles. And I buy some of you the same thing. Because the parable is the seed is the word of God. And if you follow that seed and that word, you shall come. Thank you. You see, he's been listening. Because it's all about the word. In fact, I had a bunch of scriptures written about the word. He's just finishing up what I was going to say. It's all about the word of God. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but his word will never pass away. It is written, it is so. Three or four times in the Gospels, I believe, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, talks about a big crowd. Jesus was hanging out, sharing with people. His mother and his brothers came to the crowd. Every one of the four Gospels talks about it. And they couldn't get in to talk to him because, you know, it was crowded. 
And all four say it and pretty much say the same thing. But they said, hey, tell, tell Jesus his mother and his brothers are here. And he said, look out among you. These are my mother and my brothers. And then he said, blessed is he that hears the word of God and does it. Blessed is he that wants the will of God for their life. So the question is, do you really want the will of God for your life? Or are you just hanging out whatever? If you come here, you're going to hear the truth of the word so that hopefully God can allow us to respond, which he will, if you by his grace just say, Lord, I want you for real. I want you for real. So if anybody here wants to surrender to Christ and take it to another level, and maybe you never talked about Jesus, but you want to get to that place where you are, I want you to come up in this gutter. This is the altar tonight. Let's do it. Let's do it. Come on. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And if you're not saved, if you never give your heart to Jesus, Jesus will forgive you, but you got to come and ask. Believe and then ask Him to have mercy on you. He will come in and He will forgive you for anything and everything He's ever done. Isn't that good? He's a good, good Father. And remember, you can't get to heaven by being a good old boy. You don't want to go out that way. It's not what you do, it's what He's done for you at Calvary's cross. So anybody that wants to get in this Surrender by especially if you want to be a witness for Jesus, because that's that's what he was talking about in Luke 11. He was training them, and then he told them to go. And every one of them, the 70, they all went. I wonder how many of this 50 or 60 is going to go. It's just going to be five. What a waste of God. You hear what I'm saying? God, I don't want nobody's blood on my hand. I want to tell you the truth as lovingly. And as well as God can allow me to convey it with a human voice is very frail and not much at all. Because only God that can move us. But I'll tell you what, folks. I pray. My heart's prayer for all of us is that we take this to another level. And ask God to have mercy on us and get our attention and make us into the people he wants us to be for real. Not some religious hypocrite or religious person, but a doer of the word in Jesus' name. It's about following God. So anybody else that wants prayer in this closing prayer, I want you to come up here. There's others I'm sure you want to come. Come on up. Come on up. It don't cost you no money to stand in this gutter here. In the name of Jesus. Colleen, God bless you. Your daddy was something else. Boy, you know that. He was a wild card. But he liked talking about Jesus. He was an interesting vessel though. Vessel. What? Told me once, don't hurt my vessel. Talking from the Lord and what the Lord had to say to me when I was younger and I was having the bipolar issues. Yeah. So he was talking to me from what the Lord had to say to me. And I feel like this sermon really answered a lot of my questions. And I heard a lot of the same stuff that I heard at this church I was at earlier too today. Well, God gives us daddies to help raise us up that hopefully we'll take it to heart and do something. God bless you, Colin. It's good to see you and your girlfriend. I'm going to say a prayer, and if anybody else wants to get up on this prayer, there's going to be a prayer of surrender. Now listen, this is about being just for real, as real as you know how. It's going to be God working in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure, but you have to open up. Because remember, you're a vessel, you're a container. God will come in, not just rest in you, but it'll work out that which is well-pleasing in you, so he can eventually move to you and through you. And that's what it's about. You want to be used by God. Trust me. If you're a Christian, you want to be used by God. Everyone in the, in the scriptures he trained, it was all about building them up and sending them up. In the name of Jesus. Well, does, see, she wants everybody up here. Don't dance, say to that. I don't want anybody up here whose heart is in it. You know what I'm saying? But if everybody wants to come up and stay in the gutter. There's no shame in it. I mean, come on, Lord, want you up here, so get up here. Come on. Come on, Lord, I want you up here. Anybody embarrassed because it's a gutter and not a pretty church with carpet? Anybody come up on? That's all right. So you can be real and vulnerable. The Lord wants your honesty and your authenticity. So get up here. 
Praise God. And her daddy passed two years ago, which I didn't know. So I guess she's speaking for her daddy. Her daddy probably said. So if anybody else wants to come up, I'm going to pray. And any prayer warriors, Bob, just go along too and just be praying. This is very serious, folks. Remember, the fields are white already to harvest. In other words, the Lord's looking for people that he can send forth to go into the harvest field, which is the world. Go ahead and get in line there, honey. Go ahead and get in line. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, you, you're going to be prayed for tonight, okay? Yeah. You can pray after, after service, okay? Yep. So, do you know God loves you? God loves you. God loves all these guys over here. God loves you so much. He's an awesome God. He's the friend, the Bible says, that sticks closer than a brother. So I'll not fail you, I'll not forsake you, even to the end of the world. He'll always be there. He's a good God. He's a good, good Father. Lord God, we just thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. We just bring our hearts before you in the name of Jesus. We bring our hearts before you, Father, right now in Jesus' name. And we thank you for being good and merciful and gracious. Help us, Lord, to deal with fear right now in the name of Jesus. You come on right up here. Give me this one. Help us to deal with fear right now. The fear of man, the Bible says, brings a snare. But whoever puts his trust in the Lord shall be saved. So you don't ever have to fear a man as long as you live with him. Never, for any reason. The fear of man brings a snare. And whoever brings comes to the Lord shall be saved. Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Yes. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 Praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Okay, let Let's all get our eyes on Jesus. I want to pray a mass prayer here. And then we're going to have individual prayer, okay? I want everybody to pay attention because if you're not paying attention, the devil will take what you came up here for, okay? Let's listen up. Say this, Lord Jesus Christ, by the grace of God, I come to you. And I really want you, Lord, to do a great work in my life tonight. I want to become what you want me to become. Have mercy on me, Lord, and forgive me of all my sins. Wash me and make me clean in the precious blood you shed for me. I want you, Jesus, more than my own life. Help me to open up and be real with you because I need you now more than ever before. Thank you, Jesus, for hearing my prayer. I confess my sins to you, and I ask you right now, to come into my heart and make me the kind of person you want me to be. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you not by might nor by power, but in the name of Jesus, thank you for your mercy that endures forever, your love, Lord, that never fails. Thank you for drawing men's and women's heart to you, God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your presence that is greater than the power of the adversary. Thank you for your peace that passes all understanding and rewarding your faithful servants with a love for you in their hearts that they've never had before. Lord, ignite a fresh fire in every one of them in the name of Jesus. And let them know as long as they put their eyes on you, everything's going to be all right in the name of Jesus. They don't have to bow to the devil anymore or any satanic confusion. They can rebuke the devil in Jesus' name. And the devil will go from them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, you've given us authority over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt us. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, mighty God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the commitment he made the other night. Thank you, Lord, that seed went in his heart, and he's going to move forward like never before and shake off those grave clothes tonight. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. <laughs> thank you, Lord, for my brother. Thank you for a true disciple, Lord. The devil's been trying to rip off. It's nothing new. He's trying to get us all. But he ain't going to have you, David, for breakfast, lunch, dinner, or even a cold midnight snack. Because you belong to the Most High God. 
Your daddy prayed for you. Your mama prayed for you. And you are loved by God with an everlasting love. And you're forgiven of all your sins. You are washed and cleansed by the blood of Jesus. And nothing, David, shall by any means hurt you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And that name's above every name. And when you point your bony finger at the devil the next time the devil tries to pay you a visit and say, Devil, go for me in Jesus' name. He will go instantly in Jesus' name. You have all authority over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. And that goes for you too, brother, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for this tender-hearted brother, Lord, for loving him. Thank you for the mercy of God, Lord, that endures forever that's new every morning. And you can't lie. We thank you for it. Because of that, Lord, we keep coming back to you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for loving your people. Thank you, Father, for your love. Thank you for your grace and mercy. Thank you, Father, for your presence. Lord Jesus, we love you. We praise you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for calling us. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, make him a light. Make him a light, Jesus. A brighter light. A brighter light. Let the light shine, Jesus. I speak into his heart in the name of Jesus, where the issues and forces of life are. Scripture says, guard your heart, keep it with all diligence, for out of it are the forces, the issues of life. And Lord, we thank you for his heart that wants you more right now than ever before. In Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus, thank you for Colleen, Lord. Thank you for bringing down here, her down and her buddy over there. Thank you for blessing them, Lord. And thank you, Lord, that she loves you so much. And thank you, Lord, that she likes being on shame. And she's accepted and not rejected. And she's a pretty little flower that you brought here to be in the middle of the bouquet with the rest of us. So help her to just feel comfortable and shine. In Jesus' name. In Jesus. Name. In Jesus. Name. Thank you. Let's all stand up and praise God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let's all grab a hand. Thank you. Let's all grab a hand. Don't worry about cooties. Cooties can't exist here. I said, cooties can't exist here. God's power is greater. You're in fear. Don't touch him. Don't touch him. Jesus said, lay hands. I'm going to obey Jesus. You move in faith. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. You listen to the devil. Don't worry about cooties. It's a lie from hell. Jesus came to set the captives free. Fear is your enemy. Fear will shut your mouth. Vocalize it in your heart. Keep talking about me. Lord, thank you for everyone here in Jesus' name. From Kansas City and Vietnam on this side, all the way down to our brothers and sisters on that side. Thank you, Lord, for the sweeping power of your precious Holy Spirit. And you love us more than anything else. And we want to say thank you, Father. Thank you for our sister that visited with Colleen. Bless her, Lord, whatever her situation is, whatever her life is about. Bless her right where she's at, Lord. Let her feel the comfort of the Holy Spirit right now. You said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Thank you, Lord, for loving people. And Ernest, Ernest's been around a while. He's working now, Lord. Keep having your way in him. Make sure, Lord, that... I know. Ernest loves you. Man, it must be hard to stay here for seven years. But he holds the record. And Lord, because he's a record holder, make him a chain breaker. Everything you've been putting in him all these years... Blow through his vessel, Lord, like never before. He's a big old boy, Lord. Use him to trounce on the devil and let the power of God move to him in Jesus' name. Let no fear ever come near Ernest brain in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you for Ernest, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for everybody here, Lord. Thank you for my daughter. Thank you for Ben. Thank you for continuing to heal and strengthen Ben. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible says the Lord is good. He's a stronghold in the day of trouble. And he knows them that trust in him. He knows them that trust in him. So those that are here, keep your eyes on Jesus. Because we got to get the homeless back to the shelters. Some of them got a time schedule. We got to move on, feed the troops. So you be blessed. Talk to somebody tonight as your fellowship and eat. The food's blessed. Anybody that's in the line can stay here, and Bob can Bob can pray with you in Jesus' name. Just 
wait up here only get a few moments. The rest of us are dismissed in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hey, would you take this and shut it off and give it to someone? Okay, Anthony. Thanks for helping out tonight with worship, man. That was a blessing, man. From prison to praise. That was the name of a book. That's right, brother. All right. All right. Will you be blessed out there? And hopefully, uh, if you've been sticking around, hopefully you've been encouraged by the Word of God. Let God's Word just consume you. Folks, it's all about Jesus. We can of our own selves do nothing. Absolutely nothing. But because of Jesus, because he died at Calvary's cross for us, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. God bless you. Love you all. My heart's with you. Pray for us. We'll pray for you. You be blessed in Jesus' name. Love you.